Hello. We didn't say that, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> just cause <laughs> you know who needs to say a lot of things. Uh, Simone Biles' mother. Uh oh. Um, what she needs to say. Um, I found this interview. I found very interesting, and I kind of want to bring the situation to you guys. Um, is after Simone Biles won all of her medals. Um. Mm-hmm. Nasty work by these interviewers. They found some old Miles' mom, I believe, allegedly. I could be wrong. Her biological mother. Yeah, her bi- yeah thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Her biological mother. I don't want to say she was like in a halfway house, but they were asking like, oh, have you you know, been in contact with Yikes. Simone Biles? And she's like, no, but I'm still hoping that she will reach out to me. And then um, she was talking about the sadness not being involved in her life. And she has so much to explain to her. And I think also in the interview, she alleges to she still on drugs <laughs> and she doesn't see why Simone Biles is reaching out to her and it's on Simone Biles to reach out to her and I was like hmm, one of these things don't look like the other and um, I'm just curious when it comes to that kind of situation where like a parent doesn't understand the harm that they're doing towards their child do you think Simone Biles actually has because her mom would say because she we talked about a lot of uh, emotional maturity do you think Simone Biles should have forgiveness for her mom at where she's at right now in her life? It's not all for me to say. Um, I would hope that anyone, and you know, it's different trauma you deal with, dealing with family members who have substance abuse issues. Um, from a wide lens, you know, understanding that people who are going through that, you know, they're not in their best state of mind. So how they process stuff, how they're able to communicate with folks is altered quite a bit or mm. can be rather um so you know if she does find it in her heart to you know reach out for whatever reason great if not you know she's living her life she has a husband she has her own family and life outside of whatever relationship there is or you know lack thereof that there may be yeah so you know i know this might not be a direct answer but you know no, it's up to, no, it's up to you, but, no, you yeah know. yeah um like tay said i don't know the full story but I think it's it's Simone's right at whether she wants to or she doesn't want to. I think either uh, response is fair and, and um, appropriate. If she want if she wants that relationship, she should go for it. But if she doesn't, I don't think there should be any ill will towards her that she mm-hmm. doesn't want to build that um, w- w- with someone she maybe doesn't see <clears throat> as a motherly figure mm-hmm. potentially. I will say it's been weird for media to even present that to her. her that is weird. Cause Thank like you. That's why I everything as a sports reporter, everything that's it's like, what's per- the worst per- thing I can bring up right now. After yeah. Thank you. You know, and like, and also you. this isn't like TMZ bringing this stuff up, you know, ta- tabloid mm-hmm. uh, magazines. These are sports reporters. So the only thing you should be concerned about is, you know, I don't know she's a gymnast, but if I'm like a basketball player or a yeah. football player, or whatever, like what I do between these four lines is a, you know, whether it be NBA core or, you know, football field, whatever have you, what I do as my profession, that's what you're going to write in your column. That's what you're going to write as far as your, you know, mm-hmm. B article for that week. Me and my mother's relationship has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. No. And uh, you, you both actually hit exactly the point I wanted to get at. Cause I was like watching a little bit of that. I was like, man, why is this interviewer in this person's home? Like, <clears throat> this is like something that, they should be dealing with them uh, dealing off camera was almost kind of like logic and his dad where I'm just kind of like, man, you should handle this. Yeah. <laughs> or like, like, I don't know. How- and I could almost, uh, because you brought him up, I could almost understand that a little bit more if, if a hip hop or music journalist were to ask him those questions, just because he inserts those type of stories in his content so much as is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the, uh, this actually, cause I want to still kick this with y'all. Do y'all have the same vein when Eminem is talking about his sobriety when he's talking about his family? Yeah, you open yourself up okay. to those type of questions then okay. at that point. Okay. Like if I was interviewing him, yes, that yeah. if I'm interviewing him during his peak, like the early 2000s, yes, I'm going to ask you about your relationship with your mother, you know, Haley's mom, so forth and okay. so forth, because you've said X, Y, Z. Do you guys feel like with Olympians more than other athletes, we love to find almost the the, ch- the chink in their armor, the little weakness they have? Ooh. For sure. Like I think of like the Michael Phelps situation where Michael Phelps is – I would say the greatest athlete of all time. I think he, there's a real case to be made. He is, mm-hmm. but immediately like he was ripped for like smoking, smoking weed. weed and all that stuff. Um, I, I find it interesting. And, and every other Olympian, uh, Ryan, Ryan, Lof, uh, no, L- Lockie, Lockie. Lochte. Yeah. 
Ryan Lochte and that whole situation where with the Brazilian police and like him kind of lying about it, but he didn't do anything wrong yet. Like he was made to be this like evil guy who lied about the, what the Brazilian police did or whatever. I just feel like with Olympians more than anyone, maybe because we only see them every four years. So when, you know, Ooh. there's an opportunity there, it's like blood in the water with the yeah. sharks. Uh, but it, it always feels like Olympians are the ones that just get really yeah, the most. Yeah. yeah. But it's also the most That's media true. in one uh, condensed space than ever. Like this is mm-hmm. a New York Knicks game on steroids because like within the Olympic Olympic Village, I mean, you have me, Alice from the U S from the UK, you know, every mm-hmm. stretch of the world. So damn good point. You two damn good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's, Ooh, cause they, cause they got to get it really quick. Because we're we're not gonna see them because no one's tuning in to watch you know the pre- prelims to qualify for yeah. the gymnastics because it's the barrier the entry like for example with the WNBA I don't even know what system or network you get to like watch that like there's so I many on. like what well, I've never heard of. <laughs> whereas like there's so many hoops so like I yeah. so yeah. actually I, agree I watch with that. on YouTube TV like you think we're gonna hear about Noah Lyles in like three months no no, no. not at all unless he's well, unless he makes a comment about. Oh, we you know the Boston Celtics technically aren't the world champions. Uh, yeah. It's me. <laughs> I just, um, the reason why I kind of want to just bring it up is one, that piece too as well. And it's kind of like, you know, we're a podcast. We don't like, you know, we joke around and shit like that. But like, you know, when things get serious, I, I don't think I could ever do an interview with like someone who's like inebriated or like you really, your relationship with this person is not solid or like, I kind of like, it's just kind of like, I, to me, it was just like weird. And yeah. it was just like weird. And I was like, and I just hope, you know, Simone in her heart, you know, find some level of forgiveness because when you kind of carry that kind of stuff, because, you know, I don't think she should totally like bar her mom out of her life, but you know, arms distance because you know, that that is your mom. You only get one mom. So, you know, shout out to her grandparents who, you know, stepped up. So yeah. I'm going to challenge you. You said you couldn't interview someone that was inebriated. Yeah. So would you interview Kanye? No. Unless he was like as sober as he could, could be. Not on the nitrogen? No. You've done an, a podcast inebriated. But we were all inebriated. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, oh, like, okay. but I'm talking about, I'm talking about <laughs> like, I watched this one Breakfast Club interview. I think it was, like, Ray J, and he was just, like, whatever. Oh, when he called in? He was like, Not called in, but, like, he was on the show. Like, he was, like, off the yak, and, like, they were just using him, like, as a straw man. Like, he was mm-hmm. punching back, like, hey, you know. Yeah. Do, do, do the dance. Yeah. And I was kind of like, Charlie, man, you've been. Because I got homies. so it's just to me it's just like you know when you when there's like real things in people's lives i feel like that should be one with the heel and if they did do that interview it should be like all right challenger you know i like you said that all right speaking of real lives just close my last 